So I'm wonderful. Running, so I'm running a couple minutes late. Well, you know what? We're going to have tremendous grace. We just appreciate your courage. And any governor that's willing to call for a statewide day of prayer to end abortion, you know what? We will graciously wait till you can join us. So thank you. Thank you. Well, I want to welcome everyone to the second annual statewide day of prayer to end abortion. 48 years ago today, on January 22nd, 1973, the landmark Supreme Court decision, Roe v. Wade, made abortion legal in every state. Since that day, there have been over 62 million abortions in America alone. And in Nebraska, there are close to 2,000 surgical abortions every year and also countless chemical abortions go unreported. So why do we gather today? We gather to pray that God would heal our land. We gather to pray that abortion would be unthinkable. We gather to pray for the unborn, moms and dads facing unplanned pregnancies and for outreach ministries who come alongside families in need. We gather today to acknowledge that every life is precious to God, and we are grateful that our governor has issued a call to pray today to advance the culture of life. Let's begin with prayer. Please join me. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the technology to gather in a spirit of humility and prayer. Lord, we ask for forgiveness for the lives that have been lost. And Lord, we pray that the culture of life will continue to advance, not only in Nebraska, but our nation, and that hearts and minds will be changed, that abortion would be unthinkable. Go before us now. We ask this in Christ's name alone. Amen. Well, I'm honored that Governor Ricketts has joined us, and we applaud you uh, for your courage, Governor, in issuing a proclamation today for a call of prayer for a call to prayer to end abortion. And we just want to thank you for your courage and your leadership in our state that is also impacting the nation. And I've invited you to just share some words with those that have joined us virtually in that Nebraska is a pro-life state. I hear you say that over and over again, and you have committed your administration and you personally to advancing the culture of life in Nebraska. Welcome, Governor Ricketts. Great, hey, well, thank you very much, Karen and Nate and everybody at the Nebraska Family Alliance for organizing this and for all that you do to be able to help make sure we keep pushing for the pro-life agenda here in Nebraska because uh, you're absolutely right. Nebraska is a pro-life state. You know, we see it all over. We see it, whether it's the people who attend the prayer vigils at abortion clinics, uh, the people who attended the pro-life walk that we had just this past weekend, even though it was pretty cold, not as cold as it was last year, but still pretty cold. Uh, you see it just in the way we take care of our neighbors, the, the people who go visit uh, our seniors in our long-term care facilities when they can. Uh, there's just so many the billboards as you drive down the highways across Nebraska. There's just so many uh, evidences of why Nebraska is a pro-life state. And we want to continue to reinforce that here in the state of Nebraska. And, uh, you know, certainly over the course of the last year or so, we've seen a great victory for the pro-life movement where Suzanne Geist, our senator from Lincoln here, was able to get past LB 814, which ended the barbaric practice of dismemberment abortion. Uh, just truly something that I think anybody in a civil society can agree is just a terrible thing. And uh, it was through a lot of hard work. And I want to thank all the people on this call for helping support her because th these things are not easy. Uh, Senator Geist had to get that bill pulled from the Judiciary Committee, which, as you know, is not a friendly committee to us. And then she had to fight through three filibusters and, you know, carry those 33 votes through each round to be able to get that done. And she did that all successfully. And there were other things I'm sure she had to go through to be able to get this bill passed. Uh, but she was just uh, really so courageous in doing that. And another one of our great pro-life warriors in the legislature is Senator Joni Albright. She has introduced a number of pro-life bills in the past and has got another one coming up uh, this year with regard to tax credits for women who have uh, lost their baby during pregnancy. 
So uh, again, we've just uh, got great pro-life senators. Uh, they've gotten support. We need to continue to support them because it's through your support, reaching out to let them know you got their back, uh, giving them an attaboy, uh, saying prayers for them, all those things help give those senators the strength to be able to carry on and get things done. Uh, certainly an, another person I want to mention is that pro-life warrior is my Lieutenant Governor Mike Foley, who does a fantastic job uh, in the legislature. He uh, was a pro-life warrior then. He's continued to work in my administration to advance the cause of life. Uh, you know, working with a bureaucracy, it sometimes doesn't always see it our way. And so he's uh, held accountable for making pu uh, for pushing forward on different issues. And actually one of those issues that I want to highlight is that we have created a program, a grant opportunity for emergency pregnancy services for uh, up to $2 million for three years for organizations that would be able to provide those services. And you can find that on the Health and Human Services website. That's dhhs.ne.gov, dhhs.ne.gov. If you go look under uh, grant and contract opportunities, you'll be able to find that uh, opportunity there to be able to apply for those group, those dollars. Uh, the deadline is February 2nd, or sorry, February 12th. So if you do know organizations that would qualify, want to provide emergency pregnancy services, please ask them to apply by February 12th so that we can uh, be able to uh, get those grants out to folks and be able to help with those important services. And again, this is one of the ways we show we're a pro-life state is, uh, you know, supporting those expectant mothers, uh, getting uh, resources to young families and so forth. And you see that again all over across the state too. So but great opportunity there for uh, to continue to demonstrate that we're a pro-life state here in Nebraska. So please let people know about that. And then, you know, uh, as certainly as I talk to people all across the political spectrum, uh, getting them to agree that we should end abortion is one of the things that I think is really important. And that's why this day of prayer is so important. And I would actually add to that as well is not only pray for the end of abortion, but let's, let's add our prayers for a conversion of heart for President Joe Biden. Uh, let's pray that he remembers his Catholic roots and that he does not go forward with some of his policies or that uh, he reconsiders those policies like ending the Mexico City policy or repealing the Hyde Amendment. Uh, you know, these are things that are damaging to the cause of life. It's using our taxpayer dollars to fund abortions that is typically been seen as a very controversial thing. And if we all include President Biden in our prayers uh, for that conversion of heart as we want to pray for all the people who disagree with us. Uh, we, need, we need to pray for their conversion of heart. And you know, one of the, my favorite sayings actually comes from Martin Luther King, who talked about you know, meeting hate with love, that darkness doesn't drive out darkness, only light does that. And that whenever we encounter that hate, as difficult as it may be for us, we've got to respond with love. And that is what is gonna long-term be the most effective for us in winning this battle of changing hearts and minds is by not responding with hate, but responding with love. And of course, that's certainly what Jesus Christ taught us is, you know, to respond with love. So that would just be as I wrap up here is just remind people, please, let's continue to pray for the end of abortion. Let's pray for President Biden. And let's remember that we need to respond with love to those who hate us. Thank you so much, Governor. And once again, we appreciate you. We appreciate not only your policy efforts, but I think bringing to prayer into the table and loving those that disagree with us and being light bearers in a culture that may be decaying. You know, as God's people, that's our role in society. So God bless you, Governor. You are in our prayers every day. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you very much, Karen. God bless. God bless you. This time, I want you to know that the governor's proclamation, if you would like to view it, and the prayer points for today, they are all available on our website, NebraskaFamilyAlliance.org. At this time, we're going to go to prayer, and I am so honored to start us off today. We have joining us Tony Clark. She is the executive director of Assures Women's Center in Omaha. And she's doing just that, loving moms, loving dads, providing resources to families that once considered abortion, but have made that glorious choice to save their little one. Tony, would you now lead us in prayer for babies in the womb? Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you so much for the privilege of being here. I just want to read it's a quick scripture before I pray. It's Psalms 139, 13. 
Uh, it says, for you form my inward parts, you cover me in my mother's womb. I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works and that my soul knows very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed. Let's pray. God, we just thank you so much for how you have created a mom's body to be the, the, the safe place, the haven for um, that unborn baby. And so God, today we lift up those unborn babies, God, that are in the womb today. God, I pray your protection. I pray your covering, Lord. I pray for that mom who um, is making the decision on whether or not to uh, end her pregnancy. God, I pray that when she comes into an ultrasound um, at one of the pregnancy centers across our state and across our nation, God, I pray that that ultrasound will become very real to her. God, I pray that the light that she sees, that, that life that she sees, uh, would not leave her soon. I pray, God, that the image she sees would not leave her. I pray that the heartbeat she hears, that it will be something that she would not forget. God, I pray for that patient right now that perhaps is at a sure Women's Center or is at EPS or Lincoln Pregnancy Center or at a center in Kearney or a center in Hastings. God, I pray for that mom, Lord. I pray that she would be able to, to, to recognize the life that she's carrying in that womb. God, we just pray that fathers would come alongside those moms and Lord, I pray that the, the, those dads would speak up for the lives of the unborn babies. God, you created mom's body to protect that baby. And so we just call for just protection of that unborn baby in the womb. God, we pray that every life that, um, it, that, you, that you bring to life, God, will, 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 will grow and produce much fruit. Uh, we just thank you for, 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 once again, for just the opportunity to come before you, God. We know how important life is to you. And we just wanna say thank you for uh, th those moms that are carrying those babies to term. God, I pray just a spirit of confidence, a uh, spirit of life for them in Jesus' name. Amen. And all God's people said amen. amen. Tony, and to your team and to every pregnancy center that's providing resources to families, not only in Nebraska, but across America, we are grateful. And we continue to lift them in prayer because they serve such a vital role. Joining us now and leading us in prayer is Pastor Edwards. He is from City Light and Austin is going to be praying for mothers and fathers. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah, it's an honor. Let's pray. Jesus, I, um, I can't imagine what these moms and these dads are going through facing an unplanned pregnancy. Um, the fear the questioning, the calculating, um, all the things that come with um, a surprise pregnancy. And uh, Jesus, we know that it's according to your plan and you're sovereign and you're good. But in the moment, I just know there's so many moms and dads who can't see what's next and they just see a burden. And I pray God that you would, uh, that you would convince these moms and dads that that's a blessing. And it might, that doesn't mean it won't come with hardships and difficulties, but God, ultimately that Baby is a blessing. And so, Father, I pray, like Tony prayed, that you would give dads the courage to lead and to provide and actually commit and, um, and take responsibility um, for their actions, God, that they see this baby not as a burden, um, but as a blessing. Jesus, I pray for moms, that you'd comfort them, that you'd draw near to them. Again, I can't um, imagine what they're going through, but Hebrews 4.15 says that you can, that you're not a high priest who is unable to sympathize, but you've been tempted in every way, yet without sin. And so Jesus, I pray that they would feel moms and dads like you're close to them, like you love them because you do, like you're near and that you're relating to them in their unknown, in the uncertainty, Father. Give them courage. And Jesus, it's heartbreaking to know that for many parents who are experiencing an unplanned pregnancy, the last place they go is the church. And I pray, Jesus, by your grace for change, for redemption, that the first place parents would come with an unplanned pregnancy is the church. And the church would love them and the church would care for them and the Christian neighbors would care for them and love them and support them and not look out in shame, but look in support and say, we wanna come around you, rally around your family. So Jesus, just, just do that. Would you make that change and would you provide for moms and dads, um, not just in the pregnancy, but after that baby's born, that they would see the state and the church come around them and care for them in a deep and beautiful way. We love you, Jesus. In your name, amen. Amen. 
Pastor Austin, thank you so much. I'm going to brag on you here. I just so appreciate he gave one of the most powerful messages. I was alerted to it and went online to watch during the Christmas season and just giving the pray the, the the framework and the biblical groundwork where life is worth protected. So you want to check it out, check out City Light Link and it is a powerful powerful message. Thank you for what you do. Pastor Austin, we are grateful. Thank you. Yeah. And at this time, I'd like to introduce Nate Gross. He's the policy director at Nebraska Family Alliance, and we've got some exciting news to share. Nate? Thank you, Karen, and thanks for everyone for, for joining us today. Uh, last year, in recognition of Governor Ricketts declaring January 22nd as a statewide day of prayer to end abortion, uh, we awarded Governor Ricketts uh, with our first ever Defender of Life Award uh, for everything that the governor and his administration have done and are continuing to do in our state to advance the pro-life movement. And today we're honored uh, to award our second annual recipient of NFA's Defender of Life Award. Uh, and it's my privilege today uh, to award that to Kristen New, who is with us on the call today. And Kristen played a, a really vital role in helping pass LB 814 uh, last year to end dismemberment abortion in Nebraska. Uh, the governor has described that bill as the most significant pro-life bill passed in over a decade. Uh, and it would not have happened without uh, Kristen's effort and, and her courage. Uh, many years ago, Kristen used to work actually as a counselor uh, at abortion clinics. And upon witnessing a dismemberment abortion under ultrasound for the first time, uh, that led her to leave the abortion industry. She ultimately uh, had a conversion uh, and now has a, a beautiful, profound testimony that she courageously shared and testified uh, in front of our state judiciary committee about the realities of that procedure and the truth about uh, the unborn. And Kristen's testimony was pivotal. Uh, it was cited and referenced multiple times throughout debate by state senators, uh, and it played a huge role. Uh, but but Kristen's efforts and advocacy aren't just limited to the state legislature. Kristen regularly volunteers her time going into schools and college campuses and youth groups uh, talking about the value uh, of life in the womb and how uh, we can help support uh, women facing unplanned pregnancies. Uh, Kristen, you have made such a tremendous impact on us and on the pro-life movement in Nebraska. And so... Uh, today, we're, we're honored to give you NFA's Defender of Life Award. Uh, we'll get this to you in person soon. Uh, but on behalf of Nebraska Family Alliance, congratulations, Kristen, and thank you for everything that you have done and are continuing to do uh, for the unborn and, and women across our state. And so at this time, I'd like to hand it over uh, to Kristen, who's with us on the call, uh, to share briefly. And then Kristen will get to lead us as our next uh, prayer leader today. Well, I just want to thank you. I'm very humbled. Um, it just blesses me greatly to know that those years that I worked there are not in vain. I gained a lot of knowledge and a lot of um, wisdom that has been able to be impactful to um, the pro-life movement. And I'm very grateful. I'm trying not to cry. <laughs> So, um, so thank you. Thank you for recognizing um, what I do. And uh, I just try to go wherever the Lord asked me to go. So thanks again. Okay, I'm going to move into the prayer time. And um, I literally am praying for each type of clinic worker that I know about. So um, thank you, Lord, for this time today where we can gather as an army of believers to fight the evil of abortion with our most powerful weapon, prayer. The prayer of one woman changed the trajectory of my life while working in the abortion industry. And so we trust that the prayers of many will prevail today. I lift all the clinic administrators up to you, Lord. May the pressures of their work and the responsibility for their lives of women feel very real to them. 
I ask that the truth and sanctity of life be revealed to them in a way they cannot ignore. I also pray specifically that the numbers would dwindle and clinics would close. Provide them with another life-giving job, Lord. I lift all clinic schedulers and receptionists up to you, Lord. They're the first contact for most patients, and I ask that you would somehow expose them to the truth of what abortion does to women and children. I pray that you would provide another life-giving job for them. And I also ask that you make their phone lines malfunction so that patients cannot schedule an abortion. I lift all the ultrasound technicians up to you, Lord. I pray that the gift of life would sink deep into their hearts and that they would see abortion as the evil that it is. I ask that you compel them to show the ultrasound to each woman they encounter and that they would decide to leave the abortion industry provide them with a life-giving job, Lord. I lift all patient counselors up to you, Lord. Their job is heavy. They know the painful stories behind a woman's decision to abort. And most often it is related to a lack of emotional and financial support. I ask that you would open their eyes to the gift of life and to the truth of what abortion does to women and children. Convict them that abortion is wrong and does not help women compel them to offer other resources to women that will enable them to have the support they need to carry their baby to term. Remove any fear from them and provide another job for them that uses their skills to bring life to others. I lift all nurses and nursing assistants up to you, Lord. They are in the trenches and actively participating in abortion procedures. I ask that you would reveal to them the evil behind abortion and what they are doing. I pray that the humanity of the babies would become real to them in a way that they can no longer ignore. I pray that counting the baby parts would make them feel ill and that you would provide another job for them that brings life to our fellow human beings. I lift the doctors up to you, Lord. They are deceived and their hearts are hardened towards the truth of what they are doing to women and children. I ask that you would soften their hearts towards the women and children they are hurting, Lord. May it become clear that abortion does not help women at all. I pray that they would see the beautiful humanities in the babies they are attempting to abort and that they would feel convicted to stop. I pray that they would find contentment and success in providing life-giving care outside of an abortion facility. Lastly, I lift up technicians to you, Lord, who process all the fetal tissue in the clinic. Their job is barbaric and bloody, and I pray that you allow them to feel the weight of death and convict them that the fetal tissue that they are processing is in fact a human being who has died, not a simple blob of tissue. May they feel compelled to leave the abortion industry and I trust Lord that you will provide them with a life-giving job. Most importantly, Lord, I ask that you pursue these workers without abandon and make yourself known to them in a profound way that they can no longer ignore. I ask that they come into a life-saving relationship with you, Lord, May they then work motivated by your love to reveal the truth about abortion. And I ask all this in the name of Jesus, amen. God bless you, Christian. Kristen, it's very powerful and your example to all of us to stand with courage um, compels us to do the same and to do the same with a tender heart and a prayerful heart, not a bitter heart. God bless you. Our final prayer leader is Senator Suzanne Geist. She is a state senator from Lincoln, Nebraska, and a very much a pro-life champion. And as the governor referred to at the top of our prayer meeting, she is the one that navigated through the terrains of the legislature, overcoming filibusters and all, and that now in our state, dismemberment abortion has been banned. And any of those of you that work close in the legislature, you know that's a God thing that that got over the finish line. And so welcome, Senator Geist. Thank you. It's great to be here. And I've asked Senator Geist to lead us in prayer for elected leaders and policymakers to advance the cause of life. I'm going to open with the scripture that says um, it's in um, 1 Timothy 2.2. And it says, pray this way for kings and all who are in authority so we can live peaceful and quiet lives marked by godliness and dignity. 
And also Proverbs 21, 1, the king's heart is like a stream of water directed by the Lord. He guides it wherever he pleases. So let's pray together for the hearts of those who are in authority. Father, we come to you um, acknowledging our dependence on you and knowing that um, you're the one who can change the hearts of the king. And Lord, um, I just echo what Governor Ricketts said and pray for our uh, President Biden and pray that his heart would be redirected away from death and towards the dignity and holiness of life. Lord, I pray against um, the decisions that are being made that would redirect uh, funding and support to an industry that destroys and pray that that funding and support would re be redirected by your hand to ministries and agencies that give life. I pray for our Congress, the men and women who represent us in DC, for their hearts to be turned to you, to be softened towards the children and the future of our, of our country. Lord, I also pray for the, those who are in authority in states, whether that's governors, senators, representatives across the country who represent the people in their state. Father, I pray too for their hearts to be turned towards life, to be turned towards the dignity of the baby in the womb. And Lord, I pray for the cities and the counties, the officials that make close decisions to those of us uh, who are in cities, counties, those that are in rural communities, Lord, that have any decision making. We pray that their hearts would too be turned towards life and the dignity of life. We pray that our nation would see a resurgence of the understanding of the preciousness of life. Lord, we pray that that would be guided by your spirit and guided by your hand and that we as elected officials would be obedient to your call in recognizing the holiness and dignity of life. In your holy name we pray, amen. Amen, thank you, Senator Geist. And I just want to share with all of you that have joined in on this call, a Family Research Council is honoring Senator Geist over the weekend as the Statesman of the Year for her work to ban dismemberment abortion in Nebraska. So we salute you, Senator. God bless you, God bless you. Well, I wanna thank all of the Nebraskans that have participated. My phone's been lighting up because you can't see yourself on the screen, but I just want you to know you've participated. We did that specifically so you could hear from all of the pro-leaders, pro-life leaders. And it's because we had so many responses that are participating today. That's a great problem to have. So once again, let's leave soberly, prayerfully, and continue to champion life and mark your calendar for next year, January 22nd. We once again will join in prayer on the anniversary of Roe v. Wade, praying that in our lifetime, we will see that overturned. Governor Ricketts, thank you. Thank you so much for calling our state to prayer. God bless you. For Kristen, I thank you for your courage to say the truth that what happens in abortion clinics. For Pastor Austin, I thank you for standing and teaching in your church about the dignity of life. Tony, for what you do in pregnancy resource centers, we are grateful. You all represent us well. And once again, thank you, Senator Guy. So to all of you from NFA, we thank you for standing for life and praying for life. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.